and welcome back to the workshop. In today's episode, in today's episode, we're gonna be making something absolutely insane, a project that I've wanted to do for quite a long time now. And actually, I'm coming to you here from the future. I've already done the project, and boy, was it just a whole odyssey. Not only was there all kinds of trials and tribulations throughout the building process of it, and then here we are uh, at the end, it's finished, and the video part of it is actually fighting us quite a bit as well. The part that's normally the easy part of a project, not to say that it's not challenging, it's just that normally things don't break, like you can break a dagger, it's kind of hard to break a video. For some reason, several days of footage just mysteriously goes missing. Thankfully, we still have enough of it to be able to tell the story of what happened, but I'm gonna kind of fill in a couple of pieces along the way as we're going through the video itself. So this right here, is the plan. What we have is a three-piece construction. We have the blade, we have our two handle pieces. The plan is for this to be a very blacksmithy, elemental, fantastical kind of build, not quite like anything that I've seen before. Now, we have roughly a 12-inch blade, and roughly from there to there, a six-inch handle. It's a very rough proportion. I think that looks good. It doesn't need to be exactly right there, but that's just kind of what I think looks nice. We're gonna be forging our blade out of one and a quarter inch square 1080 high carbon steel. It's a very forgiving steel, it's very easy to work with, and I just so happen to have the right size stock to be able to forge a blade this big. It's gonna be a little under a half inch thick at the Ricasso area, and I wanna have a nice distal taper going down the blade. I wanna have a forged in fuller running down the middle of it, and I want everything down here to be completely forged. I don't want any grinding, anything like that. I want it to all be forge scale and cool and rough, but still be symmetrical and clean. A bit of a dichotomy or juxtaposition, if you will. Now, the tip up here has a parallelogram, uh, a rhombus-shaped cross-section. Now, an interesting thing about this parallelogram and this cross-section right here is that if you were to rotate all of that and make it so that this wasn't such an acute angle and that angle wasn't so obtuse and moved all of those angles to be 90 degrees, it would actually make a square space. And an interesting thing about square spaces is that one square space in particular happens to be today's video sponsor. That's right, it's our favorite online website building platform. I've been using it for years. I think it is just fantastic. It's easy to use. They have pre-laid out website designs, which means that you don't have to be a great website designer in order to have a great website. They've got galleries. They've got blogs. They've got ways to link your social media. It's incredibly easy to sell products through it. It's as simple as snapping a photo of your product, putting it up there, putting a description, putting a title, putting a price, tracking the amount of units that you have to sell. It is super duper straightforward. They also have other things like members only areas if you wanna have a little bit more intimate way to connect with your audience and all sorts of other great, great things. Just about anything that you could want on a website. I'm sure that there are weird things that y'all could think of that like maybe they don't offer. But for the most part, for those of us who are normal, they do it all. Isaiah just now has built himself a lovely Squarespace website. That is this one that, um, <clears throat> And as you can see, he built out this beautiful website showcasing a lot of the lovely videos that he's done, and you can learn a little bit more about Mr. Asay Asay Asaya, as he's known around here. So if you guys are interested in checking out Squarespace, I think you'll love it, and you can go to squarespace.com and use code WILLSTELTER at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website domain or a website. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring today's episode. With that, let's fire up the forge and get to a whacking.
gonna let the blade cool down for a minute and then start to grind in the profile. Uh, so in the meantime, we're gonna start forging out our handles. Uh, we're gonna be using this wrought iron. This is an 1897 Montana wrought iron. Uh, and we're gonna forge two identical flat pieces and then from there, we'll bend them into the shape that we want and hopefully we'll be able to forge weld them onto the tang of the blade. Each of these handle pieces being forged from wrought iron ends up being about eight inches long before bending. Now there's a couple different contours that I want in there, different thicknesses. I want to have some shape to the quillings or the guard lugs, however you want to call them. I want to have some tapers in there. I need to forge points and I want to keep it all kind of light looking. I don't want it to be a visually super heavy piece and I want to have thin handle pieces to visually lighten up the piece. Forging on the wrought iron, you have to do really hot, otherwise it wants to split apart on you. But I found that unfortunately, because I have to forge it so hot, it scaled up a ton, and the first set of handle pieces that I did actually got too thin just from forge scale. The forge scale that was building up, and then I would brush it off, uh, ruined the handle pieces. So that is unfortunately part of the footage that got lost. But the first two handle pieces that I made just completely died from just from forging which was a huge bummer. So the next set that I made, I made a little bit thicker. It still has that kind of airy feel to it, but they feel a little bit more substantial. Those handle pieces, having they ripped them off after forge welding was the first major hurdle. I'm really bummed out that that footage is gone because it was a bit of a heart-wrenching moment. The forge welds themselves took very well. Uh, I had to bust apart the wrought iron and then grind it off because it was so well stuck to the 1080. But I got the new pieces for it finished and forge welded back on. This is actually a shot from the iPhone because again, that footage during this whole time is MIA. After I got the second set of handle pieces forge welded on, I actually played around for a little bit trying to figure out if I could do a wrapped collar around the top and bottom of the handle. Uh, but I ended up abandoning it because I couldn't get it to look good and I liked how it looked just as it was. Another thing that I decided to do on this handle uh, that I hadn't initially planned to do was to wrap those pieces at the top around a little bit. So they stood proud. Uh, the blade was a little over 400 thousandths of an inch thick and the handle pieces were about three quarters. So there was about 150 thou or about this much uh, standing proud on either side. And I used a straight peen and a ball peen hammer and was able to wrap and bend those pieces around. But I really like the look that the material took on there. It has kind of a plasticky look to it. Like it's not such a solid thing and then you pick it up and you're like, whoa, that's iron. Whoa. So I was really happy with that little development, that kind of progression that I came to in a very natural way. And so we'll pick up here with a quench of the blade. Again, shot on the iPhone, which was a slightly unfortunate event at the very end there as I dropped it down the quenching tube. And then we pick up with real footage shot on this camera right here in the grinding room after the quench and temper. And we're finally getting on with a very solid feeling, very cool dagger. Well, we've got our initial bubble, bubbles. I don't know what bubbles are, but we don't have those roughed in. We have our bevels roughed in. Uh, ground them in with a six inch contact wheel. We're just at a 60 grit belt right now. Uh, but one thing that I'm really noticing, and I could kind of see it before, but I didn't think that it was that big of a deal. I thought I was gonna grind out, is that right here at the top of the fuller, the big old dog leg. It looks like Marty's rear end, right there kicked on over. And so I'm gonna do my best to get this thing straightened out. Now my plan is to take some blue shop cloth, soak it in water, wrap that around the edges of the knife, then we're gonna put a block underneath the tip here, then I'm gonna take my torch with the brazing tip on it, a very fine tip, and just put a dot of heat right there, and from there I'll then clamp down right here, and hopefully between the point right there and the heat right there, 
it'll be able to bend on down and get itself straightened out. So what happened was, is my wet towel on the edge looks like it either wasn't wet enough or it fell off and it wasn't contacting or something like that. But either way, we've got a, about an inch long soft spot along the edge there, which is just quite simply unacceptable. Since I've wrecked it, I am going to redo it and I do think that I've learned some things that will really help me out along the way. The first thing is that fixing things with the torch before I do any of this will be imperative to make sure that my blade is totally and completely straight. A second thing is that I stretched out this tang a little bit too long, so that second tang is gonna be a, bit, a little bit less long. A third thing is that my plunge area here that I forged out uh, on the press got kind of dug in deep with the fullers that I used, and I'm gonna try and do that a different way, maybe get it wider from the get-go, and that way I could have cleaner ground-in plunge lines. A third thing is that the way that I forged in the tip here isn't quite right. Uh, it left me with this kind of weird dished out area. I don't like that. I'm going to leave things a little bit thicker up there so that I have room to grind in. The fourth thing is that because this tang is so long, uh, my blade is actually a little bit shorter also, and so the proportions of how long I wanted the blade to handle the bee is off. And so I'll be able to adjust that and fix it on the next one. So unfortunately this piece is scrapped and it is the sad segue into part two, which I did not film because it was literally the exact same thing. Turns out that it would have been useful because a bunch of the stuff <laughs> <laughs> went missing. I've got my guard lugs bent way back so that I can actually grind my bevels because otherwise they are completely in the way. So. Let's pick back up, masked up in the ground. The lugs are bent up, they are looking delicious. It's now time to sandblast it off. I'm gonna blacken the whole thing. First I'm gonna sandblast it, then I will etch my maker's mark right in the ricasso there. Oh, actually maybe I'll do it on the tang. That'd be kind of neat. And then we will blacken it using some Birchwood Casey Super Blue. Mm-mm-mm. So here we are with our final Odyssey dagger. This is number one. It's garbage now. But actually it's not garbage because I have plans for it. Because you know what? This is an artsy piece and I'm gonna use artsy language when I'm talking about it. And I'm gonna do artsy things for the stand. Namely, using this decaying corpse of a dagger for the stand for the cool dagger. Uh, this one overall is much better balanced, it's better proportioned, it's more comfortable, it's lighter, which is weird because it's also longer. So it takes all of the good traits about this and makes it better. And I'm just thrilled with how this piece came out. I love the wrapping around and the plasticity. 
that a word? Yeah. I love that the wrought iron looks like a malleable material uh, as it wraps around the tang here. I love the flow of the piece. I love the dimension to the guard lugs as well. I like that everything is straight on it. So I absolutely love this piece. The blackening came out nice and even on it, which is, I think, a little bit of a miracle. And I'm very excited to make a wonderful stand for it using the broken pieces from the, the earlier parts of the journey of this build. I was struggling for a long time to figure out what I wanted the name of this piece to be, um, but I think that the Odyssey Dagger is, is a perfect fitting name for it because, quite frankly, the process that I went through on this, both with the piece itself and with the video, is something that a lot of makers are very, very woefully familiar with. Uh, the process of breaking something that they've uh, been very excited about and poured a lot of time and effort and creative thought into, and then uh, it just goes wrong, and they kind of just gotta scrap it. They gotta move on uh, because it's how they make their living. Um, and fortunately, I'm not exactly in that position. Isaiah and I have the opportunity to get to uh, do things properly and go back and make things right. And a lot of makers will still do that, but oftentimes it costs them a lot to be able to do it. Uh, so I'm excited to be able to kind of capture that whole process by incorporating the broken pieces of the old dagger as well as the earlier broken pieces of the handle into not having to throw those pieces away, but incorporating them in a meaningful way into the final finished piece. Oh, my brain hurts from saying all of these thoughtful things. I'm used to hitting stuff with a hammer for a living, so. <laughs> <laughs> so this piece, along with hopefully the stand that I'll be able to create, will be available for sale at Blade Show in Atlanta. I will be at table 36A, off in the ballroom. So if you guys are interested in seeing and handling this piece, coming up and saying hi, I'll have a couple other knives for sale as well. Should I show them? Should I give them a sneaky peek, Isaiah? Let's do it. I'm gonna do it. The first piece that I did is this little three, if you have big hands or the three finger knife, if you have little tiny baby hands, it's a four finger knife. It's a Damascus integral with a carved African blackwood handle. It is a double twisted W's pattern, which is I think something that I came up with. It doesn't mean that I twisted it two times, it means that I twisted it, re-squared the billet and then twisted it the other way. So it gives a little bit more of a even organic, or we're gonna roll with it. An even organicer look, uh, it kind of disrupts the evenness of a, of a twist uh, in a very interesting way. The second knife that I have finished is this piece right here. It is a little seven inch Santoku with a African ruibos or red bush willow handle, an antiqued bronze bolster. And then for those of you who have been following along with the channel for a while, you might recognize this Damascus. This was a serpent's tongue Damascus that I made as my first piece uh, the first try at a pattern for the Jim Bowie project. I made this Damascus last July and then it just kind of sat around because there was some broken, delaminated, British looking teeth on the outside. What? I ended up cutting off the teeth because they were the problem part and forging this lovely little knife out of it. And then, uh, this being another one of those kind of Odyssey-esque pieces, uh, I tried to forge an integral out of it. That broke. I tried to make it a little longer, and this kind of whittled it down to be this point right here. It's finally done, it looks awesome, super comfortable. Uh, it's gonna be an excellent performer in the kitchen. This etch took me 15 tries, which is way too many tries, but it came out looking great. I'm really, really happy with it. The handle material is fantastic, the bronze looks cool. The bronze bolster was another challenge. The Getting the lines right on it just took a long time, but it's comfortable, it's gonna be a great user, um, and this one will also be available at my table. If you guys enjoyed this build, I think that you'd probably enjoy watching the stand get built around, so stick around for that. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments all of the things that I did wrong. And thank you to Squarespace and to our patrons for supporting us throughout this episode. With that, I will see you guys on the next one. Yeehaw.